All right, Mr. Telefero TV, how's everybody doing out there? I just wanted to pay some respects and give people an update because it's a, a very talked about story. And I just think this matters and I think we should discuss it here on my platform. Let's not do the beat on this one. Um, I want to send some prayers to the family of Cliff Dixon. And I want to send a rest in peace to Cliff. Now, if you don't know Cliff, uh, this is somebody who came up through the basketball scene in Maryland. So he was around Kevin Durant. I, like, Maryland had a lot of hoopers, a lot of good hoopers come up about 10 years ago, I would say, around when KD was coming up. And I know this is one of the guys that came up through that Maryland hoop scene as well. Very close friend of Kevin Durant. He was gunned down in Atlanta, Georgia, actually in Chamley, Georgia, right near Atlanta, uh, celebrating his birthday. Uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, he was about to walk inside of the club at his birthday party for his birthday, celebrate his birthday at a section and all that. And... He got gunned down in the parking lot. Now, the details of this uh, killing are scarce. I read one report that there was a police officer at the scene who could have very well seen something happen, right? Could have very well seen the guy. Reportedly, there was uh, a guy in all black that did this heinous crime. You know, look. I don't know what was going on in the streets or if there was just a, a crime of hatred or was he a target. I don't know. But this just seems a little funny to me. Again, rest in peace to Cliff Dixon. Uh, I, I, I think I've been around Cliff a couple times. Bobby Mays, another guy that came up through. I don't know if you guys know who these names I'm dropping here. But Bobby Mays came up through that Maryland hoop scene as well. He went to Tennessee. I did a couple celebrity games for Bobby covering a couple, and I think Cliff was at a game or two, if I'm not mistaken. So I bumped to him, and I think had a conversation with this guy in passing. A lot of people love Cliff, man. I'm seeing a lot of people from Rihanna, from Rihanna show him love online. Uh, apparently his ex was Erica Amena. I know a lot of you guys know Erica Amena from like the love and hip hop and all that stuff. The Warriors actually played last night. They beat the Pacers. I don't think Kevin Durant did press before or after the game. Obviously losing one of his closest friends, he called this dude like his adopted brother. So obviously he didn't do press uh, to talk about this. He's, his heart is heavy, losing a friend, still going out and playing the game to try to get your mind off of it for a few hours. It's got to be tough, man. It's, it's definitely got to be tough. Again, details are scarce on the murder of Cliff Dixon. I hope they find this dude. Whatever happens, it is what it is. This is, this is disgusting, man. Dude going into his birthday party to celebrate. And gets gunned down outside of his birthday party. Let me show y'all how sick the world is, right? I want to show y'all three posts. Three posts that'll just show you how sick this world is. So, uh, God rest the dead. A month ago, we lost Preem. Now, a lot of you guys don't know Preem, but Preem is, is very respected. I'll just leave it at that. And he, he, I think he had cancer, if I'm not mistaken. And a month ago, Cliff was on Instagram saying God rest the dead to pre. He said, I was always there when you called me, dog. I didn't play about you. I know you had my back and we was on the same shit. I'm gonna miss you, Prem. This happens way too fast. That's just, just a month ago, right? Now, fast forward to two days ago. Cliff, like we gotta look at this shit online. We gotta look at Cliff promote a flyer for the place he was killed at, right? He's like, look, we litty tonight. I'm heading to Sweet Lines. This is where it happened at. Right. He's like, kept catch the vibe. Right. Like literally going to promote, going to his own party. And this happens there. Now, this is the sickest post of all. Like y'all got to bear with me. A close friend to Cliff, Tamara Tyon, everybody call her Ty. She's in the WNBA. Listen to her post again, talking about her friend. Listen to this. Right. This one really hurts. Like I was literally sitting in your section waiting for you to walk in. How did a text from you saying here turn into this, shaking my head? This world needs more love and less hate. I didn't think Tuesday would, my, would be my last hug from you, always vibing and cheesing together. You just told me on FaceTime how my smile can brighten any nigga day. But look at your smile, my G. We were supposed to turn up one last time before you got back heavy in the gym and prepared for Japan, shaking my head. I love you, my God. Chris, miss you, and your smile already going way too soon. And by the way, Chris uh, did play professional basketball overseas as well. Very tall guy. You can see how he can play basketball. Uh, I just want to send some prayers to the family of Cliff. 
Also, I heard something sicker that Ty might have been on FaceTime with Cliff as the gunfire was taken off. Like as he lost his life, Ty might have been on FaceTime with him and she could literally hear the, the bullets in the background as she lost her friend to gunfire. Like, yo, this is come on, bro. This is inhumane. Rest in peace, homie. Look, I want to say this. I do want to say this because it's been on my mind anyway. And I just kind of wanted to blurt it out there while I got the attention of the people that support me. Thank y'all so much. It is very trendy to talk about police brutality. And when I was 18, I'm 25 now. When I was 18 and I got to college and police brutality was becoming a very trendy, talked about topic on social media, I was the kid who was like, well, yeah, that's one thing, but police brutality happens every so often. I'm seeing niggas kill each other in, in, in my hoods, in the streets every day. Like, that, that, that matters to me more. How can we stop the self-hate? So... When I was 18, that's how I felt. As I got through college and I learned more about police brutality and the systematic uh, racism that goes on into the world, I kind of did a 180. I turned into the guy around 22. I became the guy like, yo, nah, the system is the reason why we kill each other. The system is this. The system is that. So I, I flipped. Now I'm not the guy who's blaming us for our crimes. I'm now blaming the other side for our crimes, right? I'm blaming... Uh, the systematic racism world that we live in for why we hate each other and all that. Now I'm 25. So fast forward three years later and I'm right, like right in between. I now look at the police brutality as a real issue, but I look at it separate as an issue as from the issue of uh, us killing each other in our hoods Two totally separate issues that both need to be addressed hands on both very dangerous I plan on bringing kids in this world. I want them to feel safe when they pulled over by law enforcement. And on the other side of that, yo, I want my kid to be able to be around their people. I don't want my kid to be the, let's say I make a decent amount of money. I don't want my kid to be no snobby kid that's got to go to private school. I want my kid to be with people like how I grew up. You know what I mean? I want my kid to be around black kids, period. Like I don't want that. You know what I mean? So I'm right in the middle right now of we got issues right now. That both affect black people. Systematic racism. And also, we got a self-hate within. Bruh, a man just lost his life going into his birthday party. Like that, like that don't like that don't hit you away. Like a dude just got gunned down going into his birthday. I don't know what he had going on. I, something about that ain't right. Somebody, whoever wanted this dude dead, dead wanted to send the biggest statement they could to him and hurt his family the most they could. And I'm sure they did. To kill a man on his 32nd birthday, a time of celebration. Man, I, I, whatever comes with that, I hope it's worth it, man. I just really, really hope it's worth it for, for that. Yo, we gotta, you know what? Here's how I look at it. I don't believe we can solve the police brutality issue without start solving the self hate issue within. We got to stop the crimes. And I know this is super tough, like super complex. Not as easy as just saying, yo, stop killing each other. This is a very multifaceted issue that we got. I don't believe we can stop the police brutality issue until we stop the self-hate issue. I don't believe the other side is going to value our lives until they see us value them. That's just my opinion. You know, that's my perspective. There's no factual evidence behind that. I'm just saying it's going to be tough to argue that side when they... When they see us offing each other every single day in the hood. Like, ain't even the hood no more. That wasn't in the hood where they're having it. Like, yo, bro, this is ridiculous, fam. Like, yo, we cannot make a big splurge about police brutality. I want to get to the point where shit, when people killing each other, like, is as big a headline as police brutality. I'm talking about one killing in Chicago. The whole world talking about it, or the whole country talking about it. We all fears. Like, one of the things that scares me about my hometown, Memphis, and I know this has nothing to do with the crime, but one thing that scares me about my hometown, Memphis, is um, y'all know I, I worked at some news stations, so I know how news cycles go. Um, in Memphis, during the nightly news, that so it's called the A block and the B block. So these are pretty much 15-minute segments, right? So the news comes on, Fox 13, WREG, whatever you watch. The first 15 minutes, you got the A block. Go to commercial. You come back the second 15, 12, 15 minutes, the B block. One thing that I've seen happen, you know, in, in Memphis, there's so much crime. The A block is literally all murders a lot of nights, right? 
Like we're talking three to five murders for that 12 minutes before they go to commercial break. And now the B block is either catching you up on a murder that happened two days ago that you might have missed or recapping you on murders that have been, you know, less than a week old or two weeks old where you can get an update. So the first 30 minutes of the news right before you get to the weather is talking about murders. That's too much. That's too much. That's just too much. We got to stop this, bro. This, uh, man, this, that hurts. I don't even know dude like that. Like I said, I might have had a couple conversations with dude in passing. I just want to send a rest in peace to him and, and prayers to his family. Rest in peace, Cliff Dixon, and prayers to KD and Bobby Mays and company. I know this one hurts. I know this one hurts. Uh, Y'all get through it, though. Y'all get through it. Y'all get through it. Thank y'all so much for the time, love, support. I don't take it for granted. Salute. Rest in peace, Cliff Dixon. Gone at the age of 32.